Do you want to give your announcements, Rich? Yes. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order uh, suspending certain, well, do we need a, do I need a new announcement for this? Uh, um, are we in a new, are we in a new mode? Uh, well, all right. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 30A section 18, this meeting of the Amherst Town Board of Assessors is being conducted by a remote participation. Um, and Lee, uh, you can see us. Can you hear us, Lee? Yes. Okay. Liz, you're all set? I am. And um, I actually have Stephen wanna, Casey with us today. He's going to help we, us with one of the presentations today. Do we want to wait um, about a few minutes for Ken to show up? Absolutely. I had the idea that Ken might not make this meeting. Yeah, so do I. I seem to remember that he said he wasn't going to be here, but... Let me check my emails just to make sure. Okay. Sometimes folks will send me a message that says, you know, we're not going to make it or whatever. No, I don't believe he's going to be with us. I don't have any messages, though. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's, so let's start. And if he mm -hmm. shows up, we can, uh, we have a quorum. So Very good. I want to remind people that the meeting is being recorded to the web and could be shown on Amherst Media and broadcast on the Amherst, Town of Amherst YouTube channel. Um, um, right now, I don't see any members of the public right now. Correct. Right? And uh, I suppose I should mention that we have Steve, is it Stephen Casey is here with us? Stephen Casey is joining okay. us today. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. And is he helping you with the technical aspects of this? No, actually, he is helping me with a uh, residential exemption update that I thought you would all, all be interested in. Okay. All right. So let's go to the agenda if I can mm -hmm. find it. Let me bring up the uh, um, agenda. Right there, I, I've Since... got my. Oh, there's my agenda. Okay. All right. Uh, first of all, uh, Lee, have you reviewed the meet minutes for the June 10th, 2021 meeting? Yes. I okay. had one one quick question. Certainly. Uh, on the second page, when we were talking about pre-approve, uh, just, just, just to clarify that, I think I understand, but I just, we were talking about pre-approve, didn't have to be approved again. In other words, the summary of your decisions did not have to go to a vote again in a subsequent right. meeting. It, okay, it caused good. for confusion. Yeah, it was redundant. Exactly. Yep. And I did verify with the state of Massachusetts, our liaison, Lauren Eldridge, yep. and she did confirm that for me. Okay, great. Good. Okay. All right. Good Do question, though, Lee. Any, anything? Any other questions, Lee? No, I'm all set. All right. Um, I uh, move to approve the minutes of the of the June 10th, 2021 meeting. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And thank you. Uh, I take it that you're preparing these, Liz? Actually, this time, uh, Teresa prepared this one for me. Okay. Yeah. Right, but, you great. know, we've we've gone through a, a regiment of trying to improve the way the minutes were done. And I hope okay. you appreciate that. And, yeah, um, she did or, I shouldn't job. say appreciate that, but I hope you enjoy the new format. All right, thank you very much. If there's certainly um, anything more that you want us to try to edit or add to it, we'll be glad to. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't believe we have any members of the public with us right now. I don't um, see anybody. No. So I guess we can go to the motor vehicle abatement reports. Excellent. I'm gonna share my screen and the first one is going to be um, June 2nd. And I'm gonna try and get this up to a more respectable size before I start sharing. I didn't realize that they're all at 75%. Sorry about that, gentlemen. And that's no fun on the eyes, is it? We're not seeing it right now. You won't for just a second because okay. they were all at 75%. And I wanted to make sure that we didn't have to go through each one of them having me change the size. That gets to be a bit much on the eyes. Okay, I'm gonna share our screen. Can you see that clearly or would you like me to make it a little bit bigger? 
A little bit bigger, please. Certainly. Okay, the first on the agenda, these are abatements between May 4th and May, May 12th. Um, the total amount of these abatements for motor vehicles is um, $2,859. We will um, scan through them. I'm not with you. The first well, one guy. This had... is only the first page. And as you can see, we have some abatements from the FY19, fiscal year 19, fiscal year 20, and fiscal year, fiscal year 21. The only ones I have are on the agenda are fiscal, fiscal year 21. Well, the, they're just that they've been executed in that time frame between May 4th and May 12th. It doesn't mean that they're addressing that tax roll. They're actually addressing a, a number of tax rolls during that period. Well, the first one I have on the agenda is um, uh, June 2nd through June 3rd. That's the one. Is. Yeah. And I think that's up on the screen. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I just read from the minutes. I'm losing my oh, thing. Okay. I am okay. so sorry. Okay. okay. It, is, <laughs> it is exactly June 2nd to June yeah. 3rd. There you and go. And it's $1,021.61. So sorry, gentlemen. Well, $1,921.61 is what I see there. Yeah. Exactly. All right. That's 20 abatements. Um, I'm trying to remember what PA was. Do we remember what PA was on the code? Oh, is that PA or FA? I can't. Uh, it's so small. FA. FA. And what was that, by the way? Do we know? Um, you know what? That's all right. That's uh, I, I can I, ask um, Stephen because Stephen knows. Stephen, can you enter, uh, um, give me that reference? What is the FA code? Um, FA. F is in Frank. A is an apple. Yeah. Um, those farm exemption. Farm I mean, exemption. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. I see, a threw I me see, off. I see black squirrel. I'm wondering what those what the what that is. Yeah. Um. Or, that's a good question. The Black Squirrel LLC. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that. Sorry, I'm getting you some this view. Just uh, curious who, what whatever the vehicle was registered under, that was the name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot okay. of times they have actual farm designations on those registrations, yeah. so it's fairly easy to confirm. Mm -hmm. But that information okay. we usually get from the motor vehicles department. I move that we approve those abatements in the total amount of one thousand nine hundred twenty-one dollars and sixty-one cents. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Our next one is June seventh to June eleventh. Correct. And these are all twenty twenty uh, fiscal year. We have a total of one thousand five thirty-two. And 16 cents for the total. Well, okay, the fiscal year on the left appears to be 2021. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. One, it was one in 2020 and the yeah. rest in 2021. Right. Okay. That's the first one there. All right. So that's from that week. Uh, I move that we approve those abatements in the amount of 1,000. Boy, this print is small. $1,532.16. Yeah. I can make it bigger for you. Um, yeah, I'll second. do that for the next one. I, I increased the last one. It was better, wasn't All it? All right. Well, that's we got it. Okay. One more Let me get this a little timers. bit bigger for you. Yeah, thank you. Liz. There you go. Sorry about that, gentlemen. Okay. The next one is June 14th to June 17th, 2021. Um, the total amount of the exemption or the uh, abatement is $1,176.83 and included 10 abatements, one in 19, one in 2020 and uh, eight in 2021. All right, I move that we approve those abatements in the amount of $1,176.83. Second. All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Aye. Is there one more? Okay. One. The last one on the uh, motor vehicle excise abatements is June 21st to June 30th. Um, quite a string here. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We have six of them from 2020. We have 21 from 2021 for a total of 27 abatements and a total amount of $2,524.58. All right. All right. I move that we approve those abatements. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, we're going on to the warrants. This is for uh, real estate tax. 
I'll make this bigger because you definitely can't see that. Mm -hmm. Is that big enough for you, gentlemen? Yes. Okay, okay. very good. Um, this warrant is the amount of uh, $28,223,153,000. And thirty-six cents. And is this is this the um, is this the the the, the first um, the first warrant for the first round of uh, property taxes for this coming fiscal year? Is that right? Yes, for the um, for the vehicles. Okay, for the vehicles. For the vehicles. Okay. This says. I'm real sorry. Estate. No, this is real estate. I'm sorry. This yeah. is real estate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is the um, this is what they call the preliminary. All right. FY twenty two. Okay. Right, and I've already paid mine. Excellent. So, okay, um, I am. Uh, so, shall we approve that warrant? I move to approve the warrant for that amount of money. Twenty-eight million two hundred twenty-three dollars. Hmm. One hundred two hundred twenty-three thousand one hundred fifty-three dollars and thirty-six cents. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. The next one is. CPA tax. Preliminary CPA tax. And I, I believe you understand what the CPA tax, but for our audience, if we had one, what would be the Community yeah, Preservation it's Act? The, it's the surcharge. And it I take the it that's the sur I take it that's the surcharge on the amount that we just approved. Is that right? Yes, it is. Okay. okay. All right. Mm -hmm. um, and it is for six hundred forty-one thousand six hundred and three dollars and fifty-two cents. All right. I move that we approve that uh, that that um, that warrant. And this is for FY22. Yeah. Right. Second. F Second. FY22. Very good. Second. Next in order all is all the. Um, all those in for favor, the vote. Please say aye. 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 Okay. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to jump in. Okay. Um, the preliminary personal property tax. Um, this is for fiscal 22. It's in the amount of $1,089,044.41. And this for, for business personal property. Okay. So I'm just curious, who does the math and comes up with these numbers? Um, um, as far as the uh, personal property and real estate, I do. For all, the, for all the warrants. For the warrants, we do, yes. Okay, all right. And basically what happens with real estate and personal property, we have two programs we pull the statistics out of. Um, one of them is... Um, Vision. One is uh, a real estate resource. I think it's called RRC. Um, those appraisal programs feed our billing program. It's called the Munis program, and then we take reports from that Munis program, and that's what you see here. Okay. So, so these are preliminary based on percentages, and then the well, actual... they're they're using the actual assessments that we've calculated oh, okay. for FY twenty two. Mm -hmm. However, hi Ken. Thanks, Ken. Very good. He's beautiful. Right. Well, right, well, here at the farm. All right, we've just gotten the uh, motor vehicle abatements done, and we're moving through the uh, warrants right now. We've just approved okay. the warrants for the real estate for the CPA surcharge, and now we're looking at the personal property. And we had we just had a question about how these numbers are calculated. Okay. So as I was saying, gentlemen, um, these the appraisal portion of the real estate and the personal property are calculated in two separate programs. They feed the MUNIS program, and that's where these reports are generated from. And the, uh, the business personal property is, of course, from the forms of lists submitted by the businesses. And uh, Teresa and I process them, and so does Dave Burgess. And uh, that's what formulates the values. OK. And we have um, coming, oh, you have to vote on this one, I believe. Yes. This is the preliminary personal property tax. All right, okay. move to approve the, uh, the, the warrant for the personal property taxes. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. There again is our total. Okay. 177 properties taxable for businesses. I hope to increase that number substantially. Okay. How do you increase it? By finding uh, businesses that have not declared. Um, my first visit this morning was to UMass. Oh, and they haven't declared? 
it's not that they haven't declared because they're a college, therefore tax exempt, but there's entities on the college campus that are taxable. And some of them do report, but most of them do not. Oh, good idea. Yeah. I did this for Bradley Airport and it worked out very, very well. They collected a 10 million over budget last year. Wow. That's tax dollars, not assessment. Well, well, typically, what, what would those businesses be? Um, you've got a variety of food, food businesses there. Mm -hmm. But where the big money is, is really in the leased assets to the university. As you know, there's several labs. Um, there are several uh, you know, state-of-the-art uh, type of facilities to educate our, our, our youth at, at UMass. And much of that has to be turned over several, you know, several times in the course of a program because they fall out of, uh, they're not current, and they want the students to have the most current technology. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, is simple things like acetylene torches and uh, oxygen, those tanks, they're usually lease tanks. Mm -hmm. um, the vending machines that produce uh, their sodas and their snacks um, are usually a leased company. So there's a variety of places that we can garner um, some revenue. And I hope to add that to the FY23 list. Um, we have added some to the FY22 based on the 41 businesses that we sent uh, forms of list to. Um, some of those businesses haven't reported or underreported what they did have. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to enhance that and uh, you know bring in some really good numbers for you for the following uh, meetings. Okay. Okay. Um, and we voted on the personal property tax and we're ready to move on. Correct. Next is the uh, supplemental real estate. Let's see. We did that. And CPA. No. That's it. What is that, Liz? The supplemental real estate. Don't think I opened that particular one. Did we do it? Here it is. Yeah, it's okay. up now, Liz. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, so this is the supplemental real estate. This is our second one, and uh, there's more detail below. So I'll, let me get to the. So this is for, um, you know, for property that has been improved after the assessment date. And it's, um, I believe this one, get to the, the list. This is for um, 220 Leverett Road. You may have passed this new house. And it did get a um, occupancy and we were able to tax it for the period of time to make up the difference of what it was taxed initially to the end of the fiscal year. And that dollar amount is $2,931.70. Uh, let's go back up here, please. Okay. I don't see the numbers matching up, but that's... They're up here. Um, this is the total. I and see down that total. here, I think that um, I think this includes the CPA. That's why it yeah. doesn't match up. Yeah. Well, no. If you no, go back... that's, that that doesn't match up. That that was the initial bill. That was the initial bill they got, and this is making up the difference. So, um, so what are we voting on? I hope it's voting understood. on two thousand. $31.70. And if you oh. scroll down, you'll see the CPA chart down below on that mm -hmm. on that sheet. That's mm -hmm. correct. Now let me go further down. Yeah, there it is. Okay. okay. Yeah. What's the CPA charge is $88.20. I'm not sure why she listed it twice, but I guess that doesn't make any difference. Okay. Liz, just make sure the numbers make sense to you. Absolutely. We can't Absolutely. follow them. If you if you scroll down, I don't see that number repeated. I don't see that total repeated on this sheet here. So that's why I'm a little curious about. It. I understand. Um, I will double check to make sure that this is accurate. Um, that's, a, that's a lesser amount than the, the amount on the first sheet. So I guess I that's... understand. I understand. Um, don't think it's a typo. Because this is from 
the omitted bills. Go you know, back, I'll, I'll ask go. Stephen. Stephen, can you do me a favor? <clears throat> Are you there, Stephen? Yep, I'm here. Could you double check that paperwork for me for the supplemental bill? This is for um, Amherst Realty, Amherst Real Properties, LLC. All can you right. look it up in um, the uh, admin? Yes. And see if that matches this total, because the total we're looking for is 293170. All right. Yeah, they give me just a moment. Well, what I suggest, gentlemen, is why don't we move on to the other items on the agenda and then circle back to this? Okay. Would you agree? $500 or something, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'd feel more comfortable double checking it before the vote was cast. Yeah. And actually, next on the agenda is to discuss the residential exemption. We have some good news. Um, we have actually got the approval from Paul to send out the survey, and it's ready to go. Um, right. And Stephen, I'm going to give Stephen the, uh, uh, the floor so he can show you a little bit about um, what we're doing. So let me of sharing. Let's see. So I All right. So I I have the ability to share my screen. Um, so just to give you gentlemen a heads up, so I'm gonna be showing you what we intend to put on the website. We decided to go with uh, Microsoft Forms publications instead of SurveyMonkey. I think it's a more effective tool for our needs. Um, so let me share. I'm sorry. I saw All right. Hopefully you guys can see this all right. Yep. This. So this again is a very rough draft. Um, I actually just was working um, with one of our people in IT to put this up. So the verbiage is definitely you know subject to change, but um, it's basically the same as the letter that uh, Teresa drafted. Um, and which we're letting the public know our objective. Um, and then we have uh, these fields for um, required information. We have the first, last name, email address. Um, that's not required and phone number. Um, and then uh, property ID. Um, and then here's the essential question. Did you own and occupy this property as your principal residence in the town of Amherst, um, January 1st, 2021? Um, and this can go up once, you know, it's at a place where we're all satisfied. Uh, it can go up on our website, um, for duration, um, that it's really, um, up to you guys, how long you want it to be up there. Um, the good thing about forms is as, uh, responses come in, we can see, you know, a live update. And so. I don't know, maybe we get 20, 30, 40, whatever the number of responses, and you think that's acceptable, we can pull it down at any time. Um, so that is um, that section of it. Um, and then on that point, do we want to say something like, please respond by August? Well, that was the, one of the things we're going to bring up. Okay. Is, um, yeah. How long do you want to give them? Um, I asked Stephen to consult Brianna because Brianna has done several surveys on behalf of the town and wanted to get an idea of how much time they had given other surveys. Um, was it two weeks? Was it three weeks? I try to not exceed the three weeks, I think. Um, what did she say, by the way, um, Stephen? Have we asked her yet? Um, I did ask her and, and she was saying that would really kind of be up to, to our needs. Um, but I also consulted um, David as well. And he was thinking, you know, August 1st would be um, a good date. I think um, that's great. Does that work out for you, gentlemen? That's fine with me. Okay. I, th I think you just need to put it somewhere that you're asking them to respond by a certain date. Just so oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. That'll be that'll yeah. put in. Be put in. Okay. 
Well, we wanted to consult you first to see if you felt that that was a fair time frame to get responses back. Well, I, I'm confused as to how uh, people are going to be compelled to fill this out. We are mailing to um, the people. We're sending out a mailer. It's a paper mailer. Um, and that's what it looks like. And that will go out to each and every person that we're looking to respond. It's not the complete population. It is for the ones that do not, we do not feel are, um, that have the potential to be owner occupied, if you will, eliminating the major multifamily buildings and the apartment complexes and, you know, places that are rented by Cinda Jones, the Jones properties, um, by Jared Jones, Gerald Jones, I believe, uh, Jones LP. Jones Properties LP, um, the um, you know Puffton Village, all those um, type of major rentals. Um, I, I think uh, the Green Bombs and the um, Kendrick Place managed places, um, the ones that show that the address is not the same as uh, the address of the property. So, Stephen, um, can you put up that letter again? I didn't get a chance to really read it. Yeah, absolutely. So hopefully, I'll uh, see how I can make this slide work for you. Certainly, if you have any suggestions of uh, information that you want on there or any edits to the information, it's already got the approval from Paul, so we could make some minor changes, but I wouldn't want to make any major changes without putting it through that approval process again. So this, this is a separate mailing from the property tax bill? Yes, it is. So this is a standalone mailing. It is. Hmm. How long will it take you to get it in the mail, Liz? Um, it should take us probably two to three days to process it and get it into the mail. Um, I, we have. I, I guess with summer vacations and stuff, I'm not sure August 1st is long enough. I agree. OK. Shall we take it another weekend? I go more. I'm going to say August 15th. Yeah, the 15th. Yeah, I'd, I'd go along with that. Okay. I don't know yeah. what day of the week that is, but I'm, I'm I can look. I think that's on the weekend. Okay, so we'd have to make it a business day. What's the next business day, Stephen? I think that's August 16th, then, right? 16th. Excellent. Yeah. So, August 16th? Yeah. So, you think how many pieces are going out? Approximately 1,400. Uh, we need to do some proofreading. Do you own and occupy this property as your while you are principal residence? Oh, that's definitely got to be fixed. Yes. Yeah. Sorry about that. Again, gentlemen, this is this will um, change a little bit. So we got to change that to as you're assigned. Right, no, that doesn't look right. As your Y-O-U-R principal residence. The question itself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There you go. There we go. Um, and one other way that this uh, document will change. Um, so again, since we're not using SurveyMonkey, so this area will be gone. Um, and I will actually embed a QR code for you know those tech savvy residents that they can just scan if they want That's to amazing. do the to be able to reach this survey just from their mobile device. Okay, I, I'm sorry. I need to look at the mailing again because um, it yep. look. I, I'm not sure I understand the instruction. Please return by mail. I'm sorry. What is that instruction there at the bottom? Return by mail, fax. I provided the fax number. Um, you will need the property ID to complete online. Okay, but that. That's a sentence. I um, that you can change the sentence structure. You could say please return by mail or fax or complete online. There's three choices to do it. That's true. Okay. There is. All right. Well, that that sentence is not clear. Mm -hmm. Okay. We do or between all three of them. There's okay. Something I don't know. Yeah. That would be fine. That make it a little bit little little bit cleaner in the the way that you present it. Yeah. Can you throw an or in there between after the mail and fax? Or by fax. 
Um, we probably want to, if we, if we capitalize the F in fax, we should capitalize the M in mail. Okay. All right. It gets a little confusing. I think you want to say after or by fax, then after the phone number or, or online. Yeah, I think I think the you will need the PID number should maybe be first after, or last. Yeah, after the online part. David, I mean, um, Stephen, can you cut? You will need the property identification PID to, um, and just um, cut just after PID out, mm -hmm. or because you want to put those three items, mail, fax, or online, and then what you'll need, or before it, what, what they'll need. So well, after the okay. phone number. Well, that's all right. Ooh, okay. After the phone number, put insert, insert where you cut. Okay. All right. Okay, or to or put an or in there. Before the two. Or take the two out. I don't know. I think the or needs to be bigger. If you go just in front of the C, it'll stop doing that miniaturizing. There you go. And or before facts. Does that look acceptable, gentlemen? You, are you gonna put that code thing after the online thing? I don't know, maybe not. You don't need the code? Well, I think um, we need to give them instructions somewhere along the line. So okay, the, the whether they return could, it, um, I think the, the only time they need that later. code is when they do it actually online. Okay, leave it where it is in the code online, another place. They'll put it in this letter. Okay, and they'll have instructions when they go to the online yeah. as to what they'll need to complete it. That looks good, Stephen. Can you save that, please? Do you need a blank? You need a blank on the mailing after no. At the top. Oh, oh, the, the, the line. Can you put some dashes in there? Perfect. Okay. Yeah. All right. And All right. Why don't we go back up and do a, a complete overview before we close out this? Hold on. Comma after the telephone number. Oh, good. Yes. After the fax number, Stephen. Um, yeah. Comma. There you go. Uh, All right. Okay. Once we do. All right. Space. Yeah, there's going to be a, they're going to need a space after that comment. It's not going to like it. There we go. Sorry, I'm I'm using a laptop, just a touchpad. All right. So it's a little. Um, I'm forgetting now what the exemption code is. What the is exemption it? code tells us whether currently we consider them a home or home uh, a owner occupied dwelling, or whether it's a rental dwelling. This You're way, if put that in. You're going to put that in. We're going to populate that so that when people get it on the flip side, return to us, if they're saying that the statuses remain the same, we can check it off and say, okay, that one's been updated and it's still the same. It'll save us some data entry. So you'll populate all this letter. They won't have to do anything with this letter except for no, checking the box. Exactly. They want to the only it. thing that a taxpayer or a property owner will have to do is the bottom portion. And that's all we want them to do is answer that okay. yes or no question Could you and scroll? let us know who filled it out. All right. Can you scroll back up again, please? Okay. Please, and use, how your, please use your property identification. PID, why is above capitalized? 
because we, we are putting the property identification number above where it says dear property owner. But I don't think that above should be capitalized. No, no. It's just. It's redundant. No, it's just. No, it's, it's part of the sentence. It's in the middle of a sentence. Okay. And so if somebody wants to mail this back, how do they know where to mail it? Um, we'll have the address on it. We'll have a letterhead on it, which will have the address. All right. We're, we're not going to put, uh, we're not going to include envelopes. I don't know if we've even discussed that. Uh, a return envelope. Do you think they should have a postage stamp return envelope? Well, it doesn't have to be postage stamp, but a return envelope is always helpful. Okay. A return it, envelope. It gives you, it gives, you know. Um, I sign up to, to get it out there. When we get mail here, it gets several seconds before it goes in the circular file. Um, so, if you have a if you have an envelope, maybe that makes the mailing more expensive. But if you have a return envelope, that gives the person a sense that something's got to go back. That's true. Yep. Yeah, I agree. And okay. Then, then you just check the box, put it in, and put a stamp on it, and you're all set to mail. And we also have the box why, out here. By the way, why is why are, why are why are options why is options capitalized? I don't. Um, oh, I, okay. I mean, I guess. I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna leave it alone. That looks better. All right. Um, so so remove like, above, Stephen. They want to remove above to complete the survey. So okay. So it's going. It's going out. Um, it's going out to 1400 addresses and our and we are expecting a return of about what percentage what percent have they calculated that Stephen? um no no a wild guess isn't it yeah it depends on a lot of times it depends on the time of year sometimes it depends on the um how can i say the uh, so subject Liz, help me out as far as this is being mailed to where the tax bill goes to. Yes, not it is. the property address. It's going where no. the owner. Okay, where the tax bill goes. Right. Okay. right. But it's it should be the same address as the property. No, okay. So not, so some, none of it's an investment firm. We're we're trying to avoid the investment firms and 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 send it to those that are. Uh, but, Anybody that rents a property, they don't have their bills sent to the rental property. They have them sent to where they live. That's right. So it's That's not. Right. Going so we're to not including those folks that you know have their um, their property managed by Kendrick Properties. No, or... but if you're doing your own property and you have a rental property, you don't mail it to where the rental property is. Not normally. Not normally. So are we sending multiple pieces with different properties on them to the same address? If it has. Um, it, it, it shouldn't have multiple pieces if it's owner occupied because we're, we're we're not sending to these large apartment complexes and things like that nature or the people that have um a number of structures on one parcel we're trying if, to target the people if i that, own four rental properties i'll get four letters no if you I won't get any own, um, so if you have four that. rental properties the only thing you're going to get is the one for your house if you have if you have a home here well how do you know if my four rental properties are not owner occupied because you don't have the address for that rental property on it it's not the same address okay i'm trying to understand how if the database we're trying to clean up the database that's right if, if my three rental properties say owner occupied how do you clean that up then because they're not owner occupied, they're rental now. Well, if they're if they're rental properties, they usually don't have the address of the property. I see. Okay. So if the property has the same address, mailing address as the property itself, um, we're going to assume that they're owner occupied, and not ne not necessarily. Um, uh, those will be people we were sending out to confirm. For people that have uh, a management company managing their property, or for people that have out-of-state uh, addresses, uh, we're going to assume those are uh, not owner-occupied. We are not mailing to those, 
and that was a decision by Paul. You bring okay. up his uh, his yeah, actual email. Help me, help me out again. We're mailing the 1,400 are people that in your system say what? Say they're owner occupied. The 1,400 that we're sending to are people that have the same address as the address of the property. We're verifying that. We're not that. sure if they turned them into rentals or not. Right. And we're trying to understand that. Okay. Exactly. Um, I mean, it's not uncommon that you know folks may have the same address and and, and be renting it, but that's very infrequent unless they're owner occupied. Yeah. And which David explained that they would be entitled to a portion of the exemption if they were owner occupied. So if half if they have a duplex, for instance, and half of its owner owner occupied and half of it's rented, they would be entitled to half that exemption. Okay. Okay. All right, Ken, are you following? Not completely, but back to my example, if I had if I purchase three homes, yes, and there I turned them into rentals, and you still have them as owner occupied. I I don't know how you get your database up to date. Well, one of the things that happens um, just as a part of course, if somebody uh, transfers a property okay. and they're owner occupied, they also put a, a document on the registry of deeds that say that they're going to be occupying the dwelling. But this is a double check to make sure folks haven't since they purchased it, uh, made it into a rental property. Because that does happen. You know, a lot of oh, these people are, are, are tenured but professors. That goes back to me. If my three houses, I've turned them into rentals now. Right. You're saying I won't get three letters for those properties? No, because if, if two of those properties are obviously rental properties um, and the third has not got the same address as the actual property, um, then you won't receive a letter. And, and I'm going to I'm going to try to bring up uh, the 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 verbatim that Paul gave us. Um, let's see. Okay, I, that's fine, Liz. I just don't understand the database anymore. So I'm relying on you and, you know, to understand what you need Paul, to fill correct in the database. Paul that's gave fine. us a directive for it. Yeah. And, um, you know, what properties he wanted us to, you know, to, to address, they decided that they didn't want to go to, because we had initially said, you know, do you want us to send it to the entire residential database? And um, no, you, because you, you think yeah. most of your database is pretty good. So that, yeah, it's, it's been maintained yeah. fairly well. Yeah. Um, but there is definitely a good quantity that it, it needs to be addressed. Through so this the process. 1400 the uncertainty about the 1400 is what I'm, I'm, I'm I guess I'm they getting could have be, they could have become rentals right now yes. they're all 1400 are listed as owner occupied okay right, right. is that right Liz yes okay and they could okay. have become rentals without us knowing that I shouldn't say all that right. they're all considered owner occupied um there may be a variety you know but these are these are areas that have um you know they're obviously questionable whether they are or not so these um, are these are single family homes. I think some now of we, them are multifamily. I think some of them are a couple couple units. Um, but they're not but, managed by big management companies and right. stuff. Right. Okay. You're eliminating the big managed properties. Um, uh, a lot of those are uh, just rented, and we know that because of you know it says Kendrick Properties is managing it. Or right. and, has, the, and the objective for November or October, November, is to be able to present to the council what particular what particular data about this now. I think um, Ken, Ken we're supposed to produce the statistics that, that say, you know, what portion of the properties would be benefiting from this and how much and uh, what portion of the properties would be breaking even or not benefiting from the program. Okay. Or if all these come back as rental, then you know these would all pay higher taxes. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And it, it, you know, if it, it, there's a percentage that's that's actually um, considered appropriate when it gets beyond a certain percentage. Um, we do have those statistics, and um, it'll help us make a, an insightful. I shouldn't say us, but the the town council make an insightful decision as to whether or so not they want to promote it. So we expect that four, of the 1,400, some will come back owner occupied and some will not, right? I assume so, yes. 
Yes. And um, I think know. it's anybody's guess what percentage will come back. It's very hard to say. Yeah. I've never sent out a survey to this community before. And some communities are very responsive. And I think a lot of times it depends on the subject. Yeah. I lost my picture. Do you guys still have your picture? We yeah. still see you. Yeah. Still see you. Yeah. yeah. But but we have right now, we have a rough estimate right now of what of what percentage of the residential units in town are owner occupied, correct? Yes, we do. And it's yes, something like it's under 50%, right? Yes, it is. Okay. So we're trying to get a a a more precise fix on what that uh, what that percentage is, correct? That's correct. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I'm you know, all right. I just want to follow along here. So no, I think that was a great way to paraphrase so, it. So when the I mean, do we know what the total number of, of of residential units in the town is? What that what that big number is? Oh my goodness, it's, um, we've got quite a big number for. According to statistics of the U.S. Census, we have quite a bit big number uh, no, as far how, as residents here. As far as structures that are taxable, though, um, you know that that number is. Uh, I can actually bring it up here. I have it under my my data. So I think it's around uh, 6,300 taxable, and that's accounts that can have multiple. Uh, multiple units on one property, in some cases, multiple uh, dwellings on, on one property. But, um, That's tax bills, you're saying, for yes. housing units. Yeah, housing. we have. Uh, That's the, the total number of tax bills. Now, I'm going to bring up so one, our, one apartment might have 300 units, but that's one count, one right. tax bill. Yeah, one tax bill. Okay, all right. Um, I'm going to share my screen so that you can see what I'm looking at. Um, this is what we call the LA. Uh, LA three. LA four. It's a summary. Yeah. Can you all see that? Not yet. Okay. So what am I doing wrong? Somehow I've got these numbers up here. Stephen, are you still sharing? I'm not. You should be able to. Oh, I didn't hit the share button. I'm sorry. OK, can you see the LA4? Yes. Oops. OK, let me make it bigger. Okay, yeah. this is an annual report of our uh, fiscal year 21. And something, Liz, something happened. Yeah. Oh, I don't, you don't have it up? Well, we got it up, but it's a skinny thing. We have to get back to in-person meetings. There you go. That's I miss, better. I miss That's being good. in person. How about that? Is that better? Yep. Oh, excellent. So the residential homes, we have 4,109 taxable properties um, for the, uh, condominiums we have 1132 okay and, uh, those are automatically going to be um, you know a lot of those are, are rentals okay because our our, our university students um, do like to occupy those i'm sorry so i didn't hear you we we want to have the data that we are assembling through this process we want to have ready by what time what date well, if we look at um, Sean's plan, um, I think they were saying September. Liz, could you send a copy of that to all of us? Absolutely. Please. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Glad to. But as you can see, we have 6,957 properties, but not all of those are residential. Anything in the 100s above 101 to 106 are residential properties. Okay. And of course, those that are land only are not going to be included. That goes in here for the lubrication uh -huh. and exchange. That includes about 450 parcels that are land. Those are included as non. 
they're um, like Land not, not be included. No, it's cal it's in the calculation as part of the calculation, yeah, but it's not, it's, uh, it's not it's not part of middle, those it's 18 inches. I don't need any bigger. Okay, higher, won't they pay higher? Won't they pay? Wouldn't they pay higher tax? It's just like a rental property. So, uh, it goes through. Yeah, yeah, because they wouldn't be entitled to the exemption. Yeah. Yes, okay. yeah, but two of those, so which is did. a downside, you know, because if so you're trying did. to preserve your land, yeah. um, those folks are going to get an increase. Leather gloves. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm hearing a lot of background noise. Has someone got their mic on? Yeah. Okay, so there isn't any decision that we have to make today on this, correct? No, it was just something I wanted to, sure. um, you know, share with you so that you could see how we were addressing the sure. uh, the latest uh, uh, survey and, you know, give you an opportunity to weigh in. And I'm so glad we did because you, okay. you had some really great insights. Thank you. Okay. So is there, uh, is there a schedule for it to be mailed out? Um, the objective is to get it out this week. Yeah. Okay. But Teresa just called in sick today. Um, okay. And uh, I have uh, Stephen's been on vacation for a couple of days. We All are right. so glad, though, he's back in our office. He came back and surprised us on All Monday. All right, it, it's eleven fifty-one, and I try to keep these things under ninety minutes. So excellent. Could, could we um, could we go double back to what we were doing on personal property? I think that's where we were last. Yes. All right. Stephen, how are we doing on that one? I can't hear you, Stephen. Um, you're muted. Um, I was not at my desktop at that time you asked me. Uh, what's the name of the property? This property is actually um, 220 Leverett Road. Oh, you know what? I'm seeing this below it. The detail didn't agree with the summary. So there was, there was more than one property that was addressed in this. There we go. There's our numbers, 29, 31, and 70 cents. And then the CPA charge for $88 and 20 cents. Because there was actually two properties. Look at, there's one on uh, 375 pot wine. And I actually went to that one as well. I went to both of these properties and did a physical inspection. And like I said, this is the difference between the bill that they got initially and when they got a certificate of occupancy and the difference between the two. So for the first year, they get two bills. And it's only for these two properties. So yes, that's why I couldn't get it to total because we didn't include that other one. But it is actually- Well, I can't, I, well okay, I, I, can, we see, can we see the paperwork Oh, I'm again? sorry, I, did, I didn't share this. I'm so sorry. Let me, let me share this with you. We Are really you, do have to get back in person. It's just- it's just I know, better it's, for all it's of not us. always easy. I did beg, but. Okay, so what you're seeing is this summary here, but let me go back. I had missed this one. This is the second property. This is oh. uh, 375 uh, pot wine. Can you see that? I can make it bigger. Okay. And this is what were, the, what were the circumstances that caused these to be, so essentially, they got they're getting they're getting two bills that's right, right? That's they're right. getting two bills for fy 2022 um it would be fy 22 yes yeah because they were 50 percent or more complete as of june of last year and they completed the structure during the fiscal year okay okay so this is an additional tax bill for for these for these two properties Correct, but we couldn't tax them for the entire year for a complete structure. We're only taxing them for the portion complete as of last June. Okay. And then we're taxing them from the date that they got their certificate of occupancy to the end of the fiscal year. And that's where the second bill or supplemental bill comes in. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. So this is actually for fiscal year 2021, not 22. You're right. I'm sorry. That is fiscal, fiscal year 2021. We only had to the end of June to issue any uh, supplemental bills to that year. And these are okay. the two of them. All right. Any questions, gentlemen? No. Okay.
All right. If you if if you can just unmute yourself so we can vote on this one. We've got the total amount of three thousand nineteen dollars and ninety cents. This is a supplemental. Uh, this is a supplemental warrant, right? Yes, it is. Okay. All all those in favor? I move that we approve this warrant of three thousand nineteen dollars and ninety cents, which is the um, real estate tax plus the CPA surcharge on two two different properties as our assessor has showed us. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 That's the okay, now we've got, um, if, if I think we're done with everything except the, um, except the, um, the abatement, um, the real estate abatement uh, applications. Yes, we have uh, three of them. And these real estate exemptions are for uh, the Kineta property that transferred to the town. Rich, do you want to call executive? No, uh, they're they're abatements, right? They're they're not. Uh, um, this is call. this is got nothing that's private that shouldn't be shared with the public. It's been publicized in the media as well. Yeah. Um, these properties transferred for the town to the town for development, and I actually printed out. Um, some detail about it to give to you. So let me look at so, that. So these are abatements for FY 2021 or 22? Um, let's see here. This is uh, FY 21. Okay. And that's because Mr. Canetta uh, sold these pro there are three properties, right? Yes, there is. They were There's sold to the they were sold to the town. That's correct. Um, so he's these properties, um, let's see, when did they actually transfer? Um, February, they transferred in February. So obviously from February to the end of the, the fiscal year, we're not gonna collect taxes from the town. And that's what we're asking you to agree to uh, uh, honor the, the abatements. Okay, um, the so three properties in question are, um, let's see, uh, 72 Belcher Town Road, 76 Belcher Town Road and 80 Belcher Town Road. And are these are these buildings with are these uh, properties with houses on them? Um, some of them have houses and some of them don't. Um, 76 Belcher Town Road is vacant. Um, but 72 has a house on it. It has a uh, okay. 1994 Colonial. Okay, and I can so actually here, here, show you where these properties here's are. Here's what I didn't now. understand, Liz. I didn't understand some of the one of the, some of the applications have numbers on them, and some of them, and at least one of them doesn't. No, it actually has a num It has a number, even though it does it doesn't well, have I gotta a go structure. Back, uh, I got I got to look yeah. at because I'm, I'm looking at the field card for seventy six. The field, and, I don't know what is the field card. I've only got the applications and, and I saw an application without numbers on it. Now maybe I, I maybe I misread it. I think what may help help us is to look at the map of the area because it'll oh here's the field cards. Here we go. So here's the first field card for 72 Belcher Town Road. Now as you can see, it's only land. So this has only got land on it. But maybe it had a structure on it at one point because it does have a number assigned to it. Oh no, this one has it. No, this one has the land. This one has the land and the, the building. I don't know why it's considered. It just says exempt. I'm gonna have to fix that. That should say exempt building. Okay, I'll have to on fix the that application. In the system. On the application at the bottom, it says abate. And in writing, I'm having a difficult time reading. It says okay. abated balance of taxes. I I don't can't read that. Um, I'm going to bring this up so that it's big, big, much bigger. Okay, so um, the amount of the tax, and I do have the tax bill as well to share with you. She did not include that in your packet? Just the three applications. Okay, so you just got the face. Okay, so this is what you do have. And they were purchased February 26, 2021 by the town. And let me uh, bring up the tax bill so you can see it. This is the actual tax bill. Can everybody see that okay? Or is that too small? Yeah. I can bring it up bigger. Um, 
Okay, so that's 72. Yes, and this right. does have a structure on it. So it's a cent, and uh, by the way, did he pay the tax and he's getting a refund? Is that how that This works? shows how much he's paid and how much he hasn't paid. He has oh, okay. not paid the May 4th. Okay. He has paid um, the August 4th, the, the November and the February payments. Okay, I, I move that we approve this abatement uh, on, on uh, well, this says 80, not 72. So I, this bill says 80 and we're looking at 72. This is 72. This is, oh, it's, it does say 80, I'm sorry. We do have the one for 72 here. I thought they were in order. This is 72's property record. Yeah. Get to the bill that actually shows the one for 72. I'm sorry, I thought they were in order. But can't we just, can't we just vote on the, on the, on the application? I think so, because I mean, really, um, the amount that we're abating is the amount that we won't be able to collect. And the only thing that we're going to give back to him is what he's paid on. But um, this particular bill here is for, this is 76. And the last one should be the one that we're looking for. So I'm not sure how they got out of order. This is 72. This is the one we were talking about. This is for, okay. Um, okay, Bill, now, they have the same thing now, with all three of them. It looks like he's made the first three payments. He hasn't made the last one. Okay, now I'm just trying to match up the numbers for the application, which is right. what, we, what, we, what we got sent to us. I understand. I didn't realize she didn't send you the actual tax bills. In future, I'll make sure that that's included. Well, okay. you know, let's hope that we're in person next. So. Oh, I really hope so. That would be lovely. Yeah. And I, then, then I don't think I'll have to send it to anything. It's just this, it seems like a lot of extra work. To, it is a lot of extra to, work, and I've tried to, to make this. that. Liz, Liz, I, I got to tell you, I've tried to make that case because I think it's a lot of extra work falling on you. So. Thank you. I appreciate um, that. Well, yeah. And I, I got to um, admit, um, Teresa's out today. She's out yeah. sick. So it just made it a little bit harder. Okay, so could we look at the, uh, I see a number of 17, I'm trying to get to a vote on this. Uh, okay. 1,700 so and, uh, God, I can barely read that number. 61, is it $51? 51. 51 cents? Yes. Um, so we'll can we just the... match it up with the application? Yes, I will. Um, this is 17, oh geez, at 1761. Okay. All right. And 51 cents. And the application, I'll bring you back to the application. For 72. Yes. The application's up here. Sorry about that, gentlemen. Let me get this down to something a little bit easier to read. So for the three payments together, it was 3165. Can we see the bottom line at the bottom? I don't think there's a bottom. Oh, there here it is. is. I'm sorry. So number. for the three payments, we're looking at uh, $1,447.64. Uh, okay, so the numbers don't match. For the three on the bottom? The tax bill and the abate, yeah, right there. But it's not going to match with all the payments that he made because the payments that he made were for um no he made you know, three. part of the year that he owned so he owned it for for a portion of the year he didn't transfer it till february so he's going to actually pay for at least a month so the first payment we're not going to abate i think it's just the okay, second so and gonna, third so he's going to end up owing us money the difference between 1761 and 1447 is that what you're saying we're taking out 1447 from what he's paid He's not going to pay us the last payment because he didn't own the house. But for that portion of the fiscal year, he's going to owe us for at least January. And then he's going to have um, the rest of the uh, abatement prorated to, to the uh, amount that we gave. Um, we put it through the system for the time that he transferred the property in February to the end of the fiscal year. And that's the dollar amount we're going to be asking you to abate. 
and that's the amount that's up here. Okay. I'm, in I'm future, little, I'll make sure this is in Excel. I, I'm a little concerned because I I'm a little concerned that uh, the that maybe there's been some mix up on the. Uh, he, it looks to me as though he, he pay, made three payments on his property taxes. That's right. Okay, and he had a fourth payment coming, but he sold the property to the town. That's right. So he's getting a prorated uh, abatement consistent with how much when the property was sold. Correct. And that was right. the end of February. So and he's saying, held taxable for January and most of February. So it looks to me as though since he hasn't paid seventeen hundred and sixty one dollars, if I'm if I if the fourteen hundred and forty seven is the prorated amount, then he still owes money to the town for the balance of the fourth payment. I don't think so. It's only the third payment that's being pro rata. The fourth that's payment right. is never going to be paid. Yeah, this payment isn't being asked to abate because he didn't pay it. Okay. He, well, he didn't see, pay the 1447.64. He did but pay. That's for a different, but that's for a different address. 80, what I'm saying oh, is for all road. three of them, he's done the same practice. Let me go okay. down to the one in prac in, 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 in that we're addressing. We're addressing 72. He's made payment for uh, the first payment, the second payment, and the third payment, but he didn't have the house for the entire period. He didn't have it for the entire fiscal year that we're taxing him on. He, he transferred well, he, the it. The third February. payment was over a payment. The third payment is, forget the fourth payment, it, oh, never pay that. Third right. payment is what we're pro rate. All right, okay, okay, all right. So the, the amount we're asking for is the uh, amount on the form here. This is, uh, is it? $1,447.64. Does he get the, uh, the CPA surcharge uh, um, um, uh, refunded separately? Yes. Or abated separately? Did somebody do the calculation on the CPA surcharge? Actually, no, I don't think there is an adjustment for the CPA. That's a good question. I didn't ask that question, and I've never seen it done. Um, I don't think there is a prorate for the CPA. But I can ask that question as far it. as uh, whether there is a, a, a CPA prorate. I've never heard of it. Uh, I'm sorry. My understanding is you pay the if you pay the surcharge. Uh, okay, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, to my knowledge, I don't know that there is a, a, a proration, you know, obviously, if it was a full removal, I think that there's a full removal. But if it's in a as if it's prorated, I don't believe it's prorated. Okay, I'm trying to get us to a vote. So, um, but we're I only think... asking you to vote on the tax amount that's being prorated. I will investigate and find an answer for you, though, for for um, the question as to whether a CPA is prorated. Okay, there are three of uh, there are three applications that we have to vote on. That's correct. Okay, can we take them one at a time now? Yes. This is the next one. This is for property at 76 oh, Belcher Liz, Road. Liz, we got to take them one at a time. So we got to vote on them one at a time, Liz. So the first one was 72, which we were just- Oh, I see at. what you're saying. You're saying you're going to vote on this one right now. We, we got to vote on, on them one at a time so I can get my two colleagues out of here before, uh, before 1230. Okay. All right. So this is the, the first one to vote on. All right. I move that and a, a, so um, my understanding is in the past we have abated when we do real estate abatements we abate the amount we we break out the CPA surcharge separately as in a separate abatement. That's correct. Anybody else remember that? If, it, if there is an abatement for that, okay. but I don't know that there is. Um, okay. I will double check though. All right. Okay. Um, yeah. So, um, and maybe it's not broken out separately. So maybe this is the full amount. Um, I mean, there are, there are lines there for it. So I do see it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, um I move to approve this abatement to Mr. Canetta on 72 Belcher town road. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, the next one is 
76 Belcher Town Road. Let's just go here. This will have. Has no numbers on it. Oh my goodness. I didn't realize she didn't put it on it. I'm sorry. I thought this was a no brainer. Really? Well, looks like I am going to have to bring this back for uh, adjustment and bring it back to you when it's fully pre prepared because okay, it doesn't so look like we, look we can. At, why don't we look at 80? Okay. Belchertown Road. Initially, this was brought to us at the last meeting and 76 was missing. So I asked her to add it, but um, obviously she didn't put the dollar amounts in there. This is the one for 80 Belcher Town Road. And this one. It's an adjustment. Let me make that bigger now, for you. Here, here, here's what's bothering me about this now, okay? Yes. The amount, this is the amount that was on the tax bill for 72 Belcher Town Road. You see, I think the amounts have gotten mixed up between the two properties. Hmm. All right. Okay. You see, you see that amount is on the tax bill for 72. Yes. But it's listed on the application for 80. And I noticed she attached the wrong ones to this. I'm not feeling comfortable about this, gentlemen. All right. So I want to table yeah. this one for the next meeting. Yeah. I want to and table let's, all um, three of these applications. I would suggest that we, all three. Yeah. And I'm sorry about that. I really thought that they were all together for this. Okay. So let, so let me just raise a, um, a couple of issues that are here. What, whether the CPA surcharge gets broken out separately and we we vote the whole application with two different amounts on the application. That's a question I have. Mm -hmm. that we could resolve for the next time. Absolutely. And then if we could get the amount, the abatement amounts to match up to the- um, to Well, the, it's always uh, supposed to do bill, that. To the, if we could get the abatement amounts on the application matched up to the tax bills. I will. And normally what I try to do for you is prepare an Excel spreadsheet so that it shows exactly what you're voting on. Yeah, what, except, what, the Excel, it, you know, except the Excel spreadsheet on the Zoom meeting is it's just- It's very hard to read. And I, yeah. and well, that's why I try to send it to you in advance. Right. And, and this one, I thought that this was all together. No, I, I, saw it, I, saw it about, I saw it about an hour ago and I called in to ask about it, but I didn't get an answer. But, but, yeah. Okay. Um, right. You know, anytime you have anything that we send you, if it's not complete or you feel like you need more information, don't hesitate to give me a buzz or send me an email. I'll be glad to, to give you more information. Okay. Um, I do want to see if I, guess, I can. Liz, uh, my thought here is I don't think Teresa looked at the stuff. She, she's responsible doing this, isn't she? Uh, you know, ultimately, I'm responsible, you know, I know, I, but, yeah. but she should have the lines filled in. Is it doesn't she fill in these forms or not? She's, yeah, she does fill in these forms for me. I mean, I know you're, you're responsible to review, but somebody shouldn't be sending this stuff out like this. Not, I mean, she should be looking at it better. Okay. Um, the, uh, the only other thing I can show you is the map, but there's no point to that until I can actually put this together and feel confident about those numbers for you. I'm not, I'm not really concerned about the map. I mean, I guess I'm just concerned yeah. about getting the numbers right. I agree. So the, I, agree. Uh, I thought that they were all processed on there. It looked like it was in order. I thought that the, this this was ready to go. All right. The but only the, thing I asked Stephen to do was to to take the three of them and scan them for me. This so morning. let me ask you this. Is there money coming back to Mr. Canetta? Yes, there would be money coming. Or back. is it just bills that he doesn't have to pay? There is money coming back to him. All right. So all three of these are tabled, right? Because yes. we did vote on one. Until um, we get so, the numbers right. Yeah. Until we, yeah. I think it's it would be a smart idea to reverse that decision. Is there a way to do that uh, uh, formally? Rich, you just want to. Oh, golly. Uh, um, well, I just, um, I guess I'm going to move to rescind the first vote that we had on the first application because it looks mm -hmm. like the numbers are mixed up. So right. that, that was for 72. That was That's for right. 72. Correct. We started it. I was trying to get it moving. Yes. Uh, but I, I, 
when I saw those numbers, I did distrust that the numbers didn't match up with the tax bill. So, so, no. so we're, yeah. Okay. Um, so I move to rescind that vote. My question is, are we running up against some sort of a deadline for, um, for Mr. For this gentleman's, uh, for this gentleman to get in a, um, if he's, if he's looking at money to come back from the town. To be honest with you, um, I'd have to check into that. Um, I, from I was led to believe that there wouldn't be any holdup on refunding him, but I want to make sure he's refunded on the correct amount. Right. You know, if it's if it's got the wrong numbers uh, to present to you, uh, I, yes. I'm concerned that there may be a mistake yeah, that was made. So I think if Ken, Ken has explained it to me, which I think is he, I think if I understand what Ken is saying, he's saying there's a refund on his third quarterly tax bill. Is that your understanding, Ken? Yes. Okay. That's basically what it would be. Yes. So yeah. I'd be inclined to, I hate to do it, but have an August meeting to clear the, just this item up. Okay. I mean, I hate to wait till September on this guy. Yeah. Um, you know, he's, um, he's been waiting since April. I mean, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Well, he just to, just to clarify, um, I've actually not heard anything from Mr. Canetta. These are filled out by Teresa because David made a recommendation to actually do this, um, to make the adjustments. And okay. uh, she's trying to fulfill the request David put through to adjust these for Mr. Canetta. So in so, fairness- so, so just so I understand, a, a, a sale to the town in February right. is, a, is actually a third quarter fiscal year, is in the third quarter of the fiscal year? Yes, because our fiscal year goes from July 1st to June 30th. Okay, all right, okay. All right. So he's so if he paid through the third quarter on all three of these properties, he's entitled to some amount back. Correct. And that's property. the amount that we're asking you to refund. Him, all right. Okay. The difference. All right. Now, the only thing I could do is in light of the fact that these seem to be scrambled between them, between the properties, I think it's more of a matter of the numbers may not be on the right form with the right address because I'm looking at these forms and the way that they were put together. And the first one I have here is the 72 uh, Belcher Town Road and attached I'm seeing the tax bill for 80. So I think the total amount of the three is probably an accurate amount. Um, if you can, if you want, um, you can vote to adjust them based on the date of transfer with assessor verification. And I can send you the details on that. But you wouldn't have a dollar amount to actually vote on. Gentlemen. I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. It's so, the one individual and I'm sure they can add up the total. So Ken, would you like to put that in the form of a motion, please? I move we approve the total amount Liz is going to tell us shortly what it is. That's right. For Mr. or whoever, who's the person? Mr. Canetta. Mr. Canetta. It's Keith on, Canetta. Keith Canetta on the three properties located where, Liz? Belchertown Road. They 72. are 72, 76, and 80 Belchertown Road. I can't get going to the Robinson. No, no. Um, second. Call for the vote. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. So could we, um, could we just, um, well, I don't know, is this allowed? Probably not allowed in a, how are we going to do this? Well, Liz, you got to tell us the amount first. Right. Well, the only problem is, is I don't have an amount for the 76 Belcher Town Road that has to go through the process and I don't have a dollar amount. She hasn't given me one. So I'll have to, right. um, you know, get that number to you. I don't, I won't have it readily available right this minute. All right, we're stuck with an August meeting, I think. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I think we'll have to table this until August until we... I guess, Liz, if you talk to, this came from where? The, the um, David gave it to Teresa to process. Teresa okay. does the transfers, and I will talk to David about this. 
Um, and he did give me a quick narrative about the amount that was done, but um, the owner doesn't really know he's do anything, and therefore this is going to be a surprise to him. Then we can wait till September. Okay. In my mind, but if the owner knows about it and he's been waiting, then I think we need to go ahead and do it. Okay. Well, I'll consult David on that as far as um, his involvement with the owner and and what's the expectation. All right. Well, um, so 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 this is what I would suggest: we go to a the September we go to a September date. If we okay. need an August meeting, that we can schedule one with appropriate notice. Absolutely. Okay. And uh, uh, okay. what I can do is I can send you all the data that we would it would be only for the one item, and um, I can send you the uh, the details on that. Okay. 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 Um, so um, we need to go to us. We need. Uh, we hit it. We've hit everything on the agenda. I think. In yeah, our we have. Own, in our own particular way, right? Yes, we have. Um, Thank uh, you for your indulgence. Okay. So now I, I'm going to recommend the second Thursday in September, which is I. What date is that? Get there. I'm gonna stop sharing. Uh, that's the 16th. Thank you, Stephen. Excuse me. What? The 16th. No, that's September. not the second. No, no that's not the, the second. Se the second is the ninth. The ninth. Okay. Oh, sorry. The ninth. No. Uh, I move that we um, adjourn until September 9th. Um, uh, keep in mind that we could we could schedule something in August. Just you know, I. I uh, I, I prefer not to, but um, I think we owe it to that taxpayer if, um, you know, if he's expecting his prompt repayment. Understood. Uh, and if we could just, so if we could just, I'd like, I'd really like to do that in relatively quick form. That is, it's three properties. Yes. He sold the property on a particular date. So it's an arithmetic problem, pr um, pretty much. Right. Um, uh, he made, it looks like he made three uh, payments for three quarters, but not the fourth. Right. So, so he's got probably got some money coming off of his third quarter tax bill, as I understand it, oh, for those three properties, right? Right. Okay. All right. So it's, it's basically just approving the arithmetic. That's right. And okay. it's really, I, I would do it now, except that I don't have the numbers on one of those properties. So I'd have to do the calculations. Okay. All right. It would be longer I, than you'd want to wait. I did notice that those applications got added to a um, adjusted email from Ms. Uh, from Teresa. So she added them on um, after we had gotten after the first package that she had sent to us. So, right. so they got tacked on. So trying to make it so you get one packet and not get yeah. a lot of added okay. stuff afterwards, if at all possible. Okay. Um, now I'd rather gonna, have them. I'm gonna I'm gonna make my plea again to the manager that this meeting in September needs to be in person. I understand. And I support so, that too. No, I mean, I mean, it's, it's just, it's just, um, it's just, it's, um, well, it's, is the town manager following the council as long as the council doesn't have in-person meetings, they'll be elsewhere. He's done I it believe that's the across way the board. Yes. Yeah, the, the, across the, the board. There's no in-person meetings. There, there is so no way the council, the you know, council, voted the council for changes. There the is no way to, there is no process to verify that people have been vaccinated when they come in the building. Oh, is that uh, what it is? Uh, okay. So how long does that go on for? That's why I'm saying that I, I, I still have some uncertainty about September. I mean, I think this could go on for a while because I believe there's no process to determine that a person has been vaccinated right. when they come into the building. It was a council vote. Yeah. Uh, Right. That, that, uh, right. It was, yeah. So uh, move to adjourn to September 9th. Gentlemen, uh, Liz, have a nice summer. Thank yeah, you, same, gentlemen. Same to you all. And Liz, if there, if there are some things that we need to address in August, will you please let me know? Absolutely. So we can do all the, so we can do the notice and all that stuff. Are there right. weeks, gentlemen, are there weeks that you are absolutely not available in August? Hang on. I mean, let's go for the normal second Thursday. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. So I if could we do, do, do it, we'll be doing it August twelfth. Yeah, I could do the twelfth. Okay, if we have the regular to, time so at eleven. 
Right. So Liz, I'll be looking, you know, a week or so before, if you think we need to meet, we'll meet. Okay. Absolutely. Um, I should have this back to you no later than Monday. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Gentlemen. See thank everybody. you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.